What good is cherry laurel for honeybees and other beneficial insects? I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms, and I don't know if you're fortunate enough to have one of these large cherry laurel bushes in your yard or near your honeybees. But if you are, you ought to just stop when it's blooming and spend an hour or two underneath it watching what comes and gathers nectar and pollen. Cherry laurel is from the rose family. It's not to be confused with a European cherry laurel, and you'll find a lot of that in Northern California, Oregon, and Washington, according to the USDA plant database. But in Mississippi and much of the southeast and southern part of the United States, cherry laurel is very native, and it is an evergreen shrub. It grows 20 to 30 feet tall, and it produces a world of a lot of pollen and nectar for honeybees and other beneficial insects. However, the nectar that it produces is not only in the flowers, but it also has some extra floral nectaries. We'll talk about those in just a few moments. Over the last 10 days or so, I've been driving back and forth to check on the status of these cherry laurels blooming. It amazes me how many different beneficial insects that I see on them. Unfortunately, most of them that I see are in the upper parts of the trees and it's hard to get pictures and certainly getting video with my equipment is almost impossible. In late February and early March, there aren't any leaves on trees except for the evergreens and so the cherry laurels are evergreens. They're often planted as a shrub in people's yards. And so why is cherry laurel so good for beneficial insects and honeybees? Well, part of the reason for that is it blooms early in the year much like red maple, it produces a lot of good pollen and it also produces a lot of nectar. There are a lot of pollen sources available for us in January and February and March, but the number of good nectar sources are not quite as prevalent. Unfortunately, it blooms at a time of the year where the honeybee colonies are building up their hive populations coming off from the winter. And because of that, they don't have a whole lot of foragers out during this time of the year like they do in April and May. So even though it produces a lot of nectar and pollen, uh, it is very important for their raising brood, but they don't make a whole lot of honey off of it. Now I've seen dozens of beneficial insects foraging on the cherry laurel on the side of this road. Unfortunately, I could not get many good pictures of them, but just standing under the cherry laurels and looking up into the tops of the trees that are about 15 to 20 feet high, it is amazing, absolutely amazing, the number of different types of honeybees and other insects that are getting the nectar and or the pollen from them. Cherry laurel has what we call extra floral nectaries. And these are nectar producing glands that are apart from the flower. And what they do is they secrete nectar, this kind of sugary substance that they would normally produce in flowers, but they produce it sometimes on the stem of the leaf, sometimes on the end of the leaf. Uh, other plants produce it at other places on the plant. But what plants do when they produce these extra floral nectaries is they're attracting other insects to do things other than just pollinate the crops. Ants are one of the more common consumers uh, of extra floral nectaries and they help the plant defend against uh, different insects that actually eat the leaves or the bark or something else of the plant. So in addition to having a lot of flowers and producing a lot of nectar and pollen with the flowers, the extra floral nectaries really help the plants uh, defend against a host of insects that can destroy the plant. But at that same time, they're drawing other good insects to the plant to help defend against themselves. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, Take care, and we hope you have a great day.